It's Thousand Oscillator Mega Drone time again. Today we're going to be making a dedicated interface for it because right up to now, well, it hasn't really had anything plugged into it permanently. It's just been, you know, the odd mixing desk and stuff like that. And, it, uh, you know, it's not been really been made to be that useful or even interactive. And one of the final pieces to the puzzle is figuring out how to make it interactive uh, for the museum. Initially, I was going to purpose build a mixing desk for it so you could take up and down the volumes of the different columns. Well, the problem with this is there's a chance that a proper plonker is going to leave all of the channels up on max and walk off going <laughs> and that's just gonna get a little bit annoying after a while so it's about figuring out a way that's making an interface that is easy to use easy to get the hang of and also it kind of turns off so when nobody is using it it isn't going <laughs> Because whilst the 1000 Escalator Mega Drone is pretty snazzy, listening to it for more than, you know, four hours in a row, oh my gosh, it can get pretty grating. There's a few different things to do here. We could make it like touch sensitive with some touch pads, or we could go for the good old fashioned way with some arcade buttons and stuff like that. I was thinking about all of these different types of things. The problem that I had with touch pads was I don't really feel they give you that kind of interactive feel that an arcade button does, especially in a museum setting. So oh, I'm going down the arcade button approach. I'm sorry to all the people who said touch pads. So what we're going to do is basically bash a couple of synthesizer elements together. The first one is an envelope generator. This is something that kind of controls what happens over time. These usually have a number of different functions, namely an attack, which is basically how quickly something happens, and a release is, well, how long it holds it on after you tell it to stop doing its thing. Uh, so what we're going to do is we're actually going to keep this simple. We're only going to have an attack time and a decay time that's going to control the volume of how quickly the mega drone comes in and how quickly the mega drone goes out volume wise so if we have attack on zero for instance and release on zero uh, it would attack really quickly and release really quickly so that means the second you push the button it will go bah! and when you take your finger off the button the release is on zero so it stops immediately so it'll go bah! If we increase the release time, that means the release of the sound is a little bit longer. That means if we take our finger off, so it'll go And if we increase the attack time to make it attack slower, so when we push the button, it responds a little bit slower, it'll go you get my gist? I hope you get my gist. That was a really bad explanation, but you know, you, I'm sure you get it. And the other element that we're going to include today is a voltage controlled amplifier, a VCA. It's basically a volume knob that is controlled by electricity. So what we're going to basically do is we're going to take these two building blocks, the envelope generator and the voltage controlled amplifier, and we're going to mash it together. Namely, the envelope generator is going to basically tell the voltage controlled amplifier, which is the volume knob, to basically get louder and quieter. So it's going to keep the controls very very simple which is quite important in the museum because you don't want this thing to be too complicated because then some people get really quite bored quite quickly because it doesn't work and they don't understand why and you don't want it to be too simple just to keep people sticking around pushing the buttons for a little while so these two separate elements I've covered in YouTube videos before and in these videos there's some really good tried and tested circuits for an envelope generator and a voltage controlled amplifier so I did a patreon live stream about two weeks ago just double testing this and double checking this idea is going to work That's cool. I started by building the super simple envelope generator circuit that I did in a video quite a while back. And funnily enough, these circuits in themselves are even quite modular. You could go a step down, it's like circuit inception. Because this envelope generator is made from two things. It's made from a comparator and an integrator. A comparator is something that when a voltage goes over a certain threshold, it basically just turns on and just tells the thing to do the thing. And then the integrator takes that voltage and basically tells everything else to do whatever it needs to do over a certain amount of time. Funnily enough, the integrator part is basically a portamento slide sort of circuit. So if you took the comparator out and just used this part with a buffer at the start, you'd end up getting a portamento. You see, the fun thing about synthesizer circuits is in themselves, they are actually modular. So modular synth modules are modular in themselves. The next step is a VCA circuit. I'm going to be using the LM13700, which is quite a popular chip within filters and VCAs and stuff like that. In fact, they're used in very similar methods within a filter and a VCA. It's called a transconductance amplifier. That's because it does transconductance amplifying finger majiggies. It's a bit like an operational amplifier that's like a dog that you'd kind of tell it to sit and stand and stuff. 
Well, that's a really bad description. The thing is, you could take these fundamental building blocks and just shoehorn them into whatever you want. And that is the magic of experimentation. Anyway, after doing this live stream, I designed some printed circuit boards as quick as I possibly could. They took about an hour, so they're a bit rough on the edges and stuff, but the files are available if you want to download them. It basically includes two VCAs and two envelope generators. And this is the circuit board in question. Well, I've put together uh, five of these. They are quite big and the Gerber files for this are in the description. So if you want a dual attack decay uh, VCA uh, circuit board, well, this is it right here. Hopefully it works. Well, hopefully it works. Well, uh, what I need to do now is uh, put it onto the panel. Also, look at this. I've drawn a couple of characters along the way, uh, as well as a Valve character, and then the Cosmo logo. It's a pretty big, big bit of metal. It's it's really quite heavy. This is a meter long synth module, so it's going to be big. So I just need to pop them in. I put the LEDs into it, but not soldering it because you need to kind of marry them up to the right holes. All right. All right let's see if this fits good. I've now built this case that is directly uh, connected to the actual top of the table and this basically just sits on top of it right here and it's going to enclose the power supply, it's going to enclose everything right inside here so we've got, we're going to have the power supply up here somewhere so it's like there. Annoyingly I should have probably connected the power supply to the back of the actual panel, it would have reduced the amount of wires going everywhere in fact, nah, oh that would be cool. Now, power supply, yeah. This is gonna be cool. On this side, there is a hole that goes through to the bottom. Underneath, there is gonna be a selection of jack sockets that are gonna be on a project enclosure at the bottom. And that means that all of the wires are gonna come from here. There's a barrier here, so people can actually get to the back of this table anyway. So all of the wires are gonna come from up, up to, up via being all trunked together into here. Uh, connect up and then there'll be wires that connect to this and then I'll be able to modify this to have more speakers because right now there's only one but who knows over time there may become two and then four and then ten you know but it's just for now let's just get into one get it working I just did this video for TikTok uh, about winding equipment wire hope you enjoy <laughs> how to wind equipment wire the stupid way Tie equipment wire to a fixed point like this rare effects pedal <laughs> Wind out as much of the wire as you need. That should do. Put end into drill. Tighten drill. Wind. Lovely. Is just put this together which is a mixer circuit that's going to mix all of these together for the audio output this is just a single output so one speaker at now for now like I said and then it'll be you know different later on if you want to build this the links are in the description for information I nearly dropped it I'm gonna put that right here so let's uh let's get this all wired up shall we So I'm just getting all the power supply uh, wired up. Uh, it's all there's all a number there's a number of things that are connected to each of them, uh, including uh, input, output, and power basically. Yeah, you can see it's all wired up basically. So now it's time to do a really quick test. I've got a few wires wired in. I haven't got any spare. It's obviously a bit messy right now, but it's wiring up to the first five columns. And as you can see, well, it's on and it's lovely. And if you listen, the uh, PA system needs a bit of a clean, that's for sure, but. And then we can make it a bit crescendo. How 
cool is that? It actually worked. So I've finished neatening up the wires. Everything's out of reach. As you can see, they are basically going up the leg uh, above all of the dismantled oscilloscopes that are underneath here on display. <laughs> And yeah, this is now all kind of plugged in and ready to go. So uh, let's let's give it a go. Just spent the last hour tuning a few different chords. Uh, so yeah, I'm gonna plug it in and we'll record some direct stuff. I think it does its purpose and that makes this interactive without having to deal with people uh, constantly twisting knobs and just making everything out of tune because uh, yeah I mean even tuning just a couple of chords took an hour or so uh, it's very labor intensive to do chord tuning and I could have made some better chords in fact in the next couple of weeks I may do a public live stream of literally just tuning chords for a couple of hours just to kind of show the tediosity of this whole machine but it's cool so there's obviously at some point there will be opportunities uh, for uh, opportunities for literally just playing and trying to tune it for a day and just um you know using it for whatever purpose uh, but for standard museum use this is going to be suffice just to kind of give it an idea of what's going on obviously we need the other controller that actually does the slide functions that's the voltage over the whole thing to make the notes ramp up and down that's a whole other controller entirely and there'll be a video on that pretty soon the sounds that you heard from the Mega Drone in this video, amongst loads more and, you know, outtakes and stuff are available over on my Patreon because needless to say, all of these knobs get paid for uh, by Patreon, so thank you very much. Also, you can watch back a couple of live streams on this project, including the breadboarding and also the testing and maintaining of the machine. These are watch backable on Patreon as well, amongst loads of other builders' live streams. But yeah, until next time, I've been Luke Mum No Computer. If you like what you see, don't forget to subscribe and don't be scared to try it. Maybe, maybe don't build a really big synth that just goes, Whoa, but you can if you want, you can if you want.